podcast and YouTube live. We got a lot to get to with our next guest, the great Dean Millard, joining us from the City of Champions from Four Vengeance Media now, which we're going to get into in a moment. But Dino, welcome. Listen, a fun little uh, our poll question today for Key Auto Group is: How many points do you think Connor Bedard will get with, with the Chicago Blackhawks as a rookie? Can we start there? What do you What do you think he'll get with the Blackhawks? works for me. I think he's a, a point of game. Um, like I, I think that uh, as long as he's healthy, uh, I think that we'll see a uh, point of game production from, from Connor Bedard. Um, I think the Blackhawks have done a good job of uh, bringing in some pieces around him that are going to protect him and help him. So if he plays every game, um, I don't see why he can't get 80 plus points. He's been very durable. Uh, throughout his major junior career, we'll see how it goes in the NHL. But he, I'm, I'm totally with you. He hasn't missed action, so I don't think he'll miss nope. games. And I've got him, at, I've got him at 82 points. So uh, not surprisingly, Dean, you and I think along the same lines. By the way, let me tell you how your summer's going. Where's your sports focus up there? Uh, Orders off season, the <clears throat> Elks, or what? Or yeah, baseball? Not. Not, not the Elks. For me, it's baseball right now and what Shohei Otani is doing. Uh, you know, like, uh, this just blows my mind. This guy could break Aaron Judge's record this year and win the Cy Young. Can you believe that I just said that? Like, it's, it's, he could set a home run record for a single season and just, you know, might be up for the Cy Young. It's, it's ridiculous what he is doing. And now that we're post-All-Star break, the trade deadline is coming into it. Will he be dealt? Cody Bellinger uh, could be dealt. So my focus is, uh, number one, um, baseball, uh, Major League Baseball, and then two, what's happening in the NHL offseason. Uh, I, I I can't get into to the Elks. It's uh, it's too sad. Like, I, I just can't. So I'm just not going to go there, and I'm going to concentrate on baseball and hockey in this offseason. Well, to be honest, there's no obligation to cheer for them either. They need to earn it. So back to the Otani thing, That's because right. a viewer in Saskatoon before the break, if you saw it, wrote in and said, he's upset the Blue Jays owners are too cheap to go after Otani. I'm like, I can't even imagine what it would cost. He's potentially the greatest MLB player of all time. But what, what would the Angels yeah, we, we, want for him? Uh, you know, why would they try? I just don't know why you would trade this valuable asset i would never trade shohei otani if i had him because he's going to bring people into the ballpark to watch him um it's it's amazing I, we had this discussion in our office the other day at uh, four vengeance media about it, who's going to be the first billion dollar athlete i'm guessing it's going to be a, a football slash soccer player but shohei otani is going to break the bank i selfishly would love him to end up with the dodgers but Wherever he goes, he's going to be the highest paid player for a long time. Now, the, the concern is that how long can he do this double duty for? That, that's the big concern. You're shelling out that kind of money. What happens if the unthinkable happens? And, and then you're, you're, you're looking at, wow, this was a, a terrible move. So there's a lot that goes into the potential trading for and signing of this unicorn athlete. Well, Connor McDavid's the greatest player in hockey right now, and the orders aren't interested in getting rid of him. I mean, I don't think you get rid of, like, for that reason. I mean, I don't know what Otani's like personally. You don't hear anything bad about him. When you have a cornerstone athlete like that, only an idiotic franchise would get rid of him, or an idiotic owner, which I don't think the Angels yeah. have. Yeah, well, some Angels fans would argue with you on that, but uh, you're you're right. <laughs> the only time you do that is if you're broke, a la Pocklington with uh, the the Gretzky trade, right? You just you just don't, you know. I I certainly wouldn't do it. And and what you know, you mentioned Connor McDavid. What are the Oilers doing? They're bringing in guys that he likes, Connor Brown in the offseason, Drake Kajula. Uh, McDavid was upset when when Kajula was traded, and it was, a, it was a, well not upset, but it was a good friend of his. Um, so they're bringing in guys to insulate around him. The Angels have tried to do that. It just hasn't worked uh, as well as I think, you know, what the Oilers are trying to do. So that's what you do. You have a superstar like that. You keep them and you surround them, which, by the way, going back to the original question about Bodard, I don't think the Pats did at all uh, enough. But the Angels, the Oilers, uh, anybody else that you have as that, that superstar player, surround them, make, keep them as happy as possible. Well, you know what, and that's my, you're hitting me in the fields with the Pats thing there. You know, <laughs> They tried. They tried, and those players didn't pan out. And I'm not going to name them. It's right. But uh, it's interesting now. Paddock's gone. Bedard's gone. 
new era. Um, speaking of a new era, I could talk about this forever. For vengeance. I didn't realize those are the guys that own the wall. They, they own everybody in sports, basically, uh, based out of Edmonton. Tell us about that. Yeah, for vengeance media, uh, the, the the company that I'm working with, uh, a multi talented uh, streaming uh, and, and production company. Uh, we are currently uh, produced the Spruce Grove Saints. Uh, we produce the Junior Prospects Hockey League, the Hockey Super League uh, events like that, and uh, the the parent company, as you mentioned, Silent Ice, which owns. Uh, the Spruce Grove Saints, the Seattle Thunderbirds, the Stony Plain Eagles, and building a state-of-the-art arena just south of uh, Edmonton in Nisku. Uh, this thing is going to have every bell and whistle. Uh, it's got stadium seating, two arenas, uh, big plans. I just love it. Um, uh, you know, I, we, we talked about this before. You and I went in different directions. You started out in radio and, and play-by-play and then got into TV. I was in TV, and now I've gotten into play-by-play, and I, I absolutely love it. Um, you, you work a lot in the winter and, and you, you relax a little bit more in the summer, but this is a great company. Uh, we have a, a new show coming out uh, in the fall that uh, we'll tell people about uh, down the road. So exciting times uh, here in uh, the just outside of the capital city. We're based in Spruce Grove where the Saints are and uh, yeah, for Vengeance Media. Um, we're, uh, we're, we're going to be uh, trying to take a big bite of the streaming market and um, you know produce as much as we can and we're, we're absolutely loving it right now. Well, you're the guy to do it. And to be honest, that's I was just talking with my business manager this morning and I said, you and I have always been ahead of the curve talking with him. And uh, now it's events and it's streaming and it's play by play. And that's how we found ourselves in Charlotte, North Carolina, calling the U.S. flag football championship. Yeah. And it's just it's just fun. Right. It's just people like it's by the time they realize what we're doing, it's going to be too late. Right. So I'm glad that you're as happy as I am. You certainly seem to be Dean and you settled into a role that that's good for you man so i'm proud of you i did not know about this so thanks for inviting us uh, to to discuss it and i know those are great yeah. guys so say hey for me and uh and yeah that's cool thanks for the time man what else you got i will nope well i was just gonna say the streaming uh, market is crazy like i remember when we were kids you know how we used to get to watch a game somebody's mom or dad brought their giant camera and it looked like they were shooting out of a canoe and maybe one of them was doing the play by play. And if you, if you were lucky, you got to see one of your saves, right? Now these kids get to go back and watch their games and they get the footage for the TikToks and, and, and all the social medias. It's, it's incredible. The, uh, the social media presence that, that we have is amazing. And that's what the, the kids love. So, um, you, you know, you gotta, you gotta feed the beast and Rod, one more thing. I'm going to call you, you randomly at two thirty eight. Yeah. And see if you want to hit a bucket of balls with me. You were How about watching that, that eh? <laughs> hey, I'm not going to force you off the air here. You just, the reason I'm smiling is I remember that first day. And I can't remember whose parent it was that brought the video camera. I want to <laughs> say I was in Pee Wee. I want to say I was in Pee Wee. And I was watching myself on a VHS tape playing goal. I was like, oh. It was like the most it's crazy. Eh? I couldn't believe it. You're right. Oh, yeah. So they're all growing up like Grant Fuhr now. But I remember the that's first right. time. Yeah, that's amazing. Okay. Thanks, Dean. Yeah. Can't wait to go golfing with you. You bet. Thanks, Rod. <laughs> Don't hold your breath.